Does your child learn best through images like pictures, graphs, and charts? Do they like to use different color highlighters and color code information in their text? Or maybe they like to hear information spoken verbally to them through things like lectures, podcasts, and audiobooks, and they thrive on group discussion. Maybe your learner likes to sit back and take their own notes and write them over and over again, organizing them in great detailed outline order. Or maybe they're an on-the-go learner. They're always wiggling in their seat, tapping their foot or their pencil, and they would rather have a hands-on learning experience rather than just reading it in a textbook. Well, if any of these sound familiar to you, then your child might have a dominant learning style that is one of the VARC learning styles. You see, we are going to be talking today about the VARC learning styles and how you can determine which one of these visual, auditory, read-write, or kinesthetic learning styles might be your child's dominant learning style and how you can capitalize on that knowledge to teach them and give them information in a way that they learn best. All right, let's get started. My name is Emily and welcome back to my channel. In part one of the series, we talked about the first two learning styles from the VARC learning style method, visual learners and auditory learners. Visual learners are ones that see with their eyes. They, they engage the eyes and they have to see pictures and images. And auditory learners, they have to engage the ears. They wanna hear things and have more discussion so that way they can hear the information presented to them. If one of those sound familiar to you, maybe you should check out our other video, part one, where we talk about those type of learning styles. But today, we're gonna talk about the other two. We're gonna talk about read, write, and kinesthetic. You know, I taught for five years in a Christian school, and now I'm teaching my own three kids, and I really believe that there are learning styles that best suit different children, and different adults for that matter. So I hope through this video to help you identify what your child might land in and give you some tips of how you can present information to them. First of all, I'd like to remind you that a lot of people do not just learn in one particular way. So make sure not to put your child in a box. We normally have a little bit of this method and a little bit of this method, but a lot of times if you look closely, your child might have one dominant learning style that helps them just retain information and just makes it click for them. And I think it's important that you, as their teacher, realize this and really use this pro of homeschooling where we can tailor their learning to teach them in the best way possible for them. The first method we're gonna be talking about in this video is the R, read-write method. I personally think that this is the method that I tend to learn best with. You see, read-write method is ones who like to read the text for themselves and then write out notes on their own. It's kind of like a subset of the visual because you're still using your eyes, but it's more text-driven than picture-driven. Read-write learners usually prefer text as their way of learning. They learn best when reading information for themselves. That might be why a lot of read-write learners are bookworms, and you can find them at libraries, looking things up in reference books or dictionaries. Maybe like me, they like to look up online articles and read articles for themselves to help them study and learn more information. Writing notes seems to come easy for them. While some struggle, that is their best way of learning. They love to write notes and they write lots of them. That's how I am. I would prefer just to write and write and write things down, especially if I'm hearing somebody else speak to me then I have to write down notes. I, I'm not like an auditory learner. I can't walk away and remember what was said. I have to write it down and a lot of times write it over and over and over to make sure that I have it inside my head and that I retain it. Now, some of the tips that you can use with a read-write learner is you can have them rewrite information in their own words. You know, you can have them read a section of text, um, or maybe you can tell them something because that's one of the things they struggle with the most, I believe, is hearing the verbal information. So you can tell them something and say, okay, now you write th that down in your own words of what you think that means. And so they can write down in their notes in their own way, and then you can check that and see if it lines up and they're really understanding the information. Because if they just look at something and then copy it down word for word, 
it's not really helping much with their understanding. So have them write something down, but have them write it down in their own words. And that really helps. This helps with like charts and graphs and information where the visual learner likes the charts and graphs. The read write learner normally needs to see it in text form. So if they could take the chart and write out in words what the chart means, then that's definitely going to help them. And I would encourage them just take lots and lots and lots of notes. Then I would write them out again and again, like organizing them, putting them into outlines, putting them into categories and groups. Because a lot of times when you're going through, you can't, you don't have time to put them in order as somebody's teaching or as you're reading. So you could just jot things down as it comes to you and then have them go back and reorder them. And so I think that's important for a read write learner. Now, Another thing that might be good is to find a curriculum that is very literature based. And so if you have a read write learner and text is so important for them, well then find a curriculum that has a lot of text in it. Um, I know there's different curriculums that are mostly book based. And so I know Sunlight, I believe, has a lot of reading in it. Um, ACE, the curriculum that we're doing, is a lot of reading. It's a lot of self-taught you read. And um, so I know that that seemed to help me growing up because that's the curriculum that I grew up using was ACE. And so I had a lot of just setting in my own office and reading the information for myself. And so for a read-write learner, you want a more literature-based, a lot of books and text for them. Another thing that might be helpful for a read-write learner is if they have room in their textbook or on their paper to write in the margins. You know, they can kind of read what they have in their book and then they can summarize it in their own words right there beside the information if there's room in the margins. And things like underlining. I know um, for our curriculum that we use, you'll read a story and then you will have a page of questions in some of my son's books. And so to go back and look and to see where the answer is, and if it's a specific answer, then actually underlining the answer that you see, then coming over here and writing it in. And so something about underlining it in the text, your knowledge in the text, adding to the text, and then writing your answer definitely helps it stick in their mind. All right, our second learner is a kinesthetic learner. And I'm gonna be honest, this is my favorite learning style to teach. I love these type of learners. Now, they can be labeled the troublemakers sometimes or the ones that, you know, just don't pay attention because they're always fidgeting and they always want to move because that's just their learning style. But I think there's so much potential of ways to teach a kinesthetic learner. So a kinesthetic learner just is one that learns by seeing, doing, and touching. They literally want to have a hands-on experience. They don't want to just hear somebody tell them about something. They don't want to just read about something. They want to do it. And so these um, learners are so fun to work with. So some of the traits of a kinesthetic learner. The first thing is, as I've mentioned, that kinesthetic learners have trouble setting still. They're constantly fidgeting and moving and squirming around in their seat, and they like to constantly be on the move. They don't like to set still. They're normally very creative. They like to make things with their hands, crafts and arts and drawings. They like to do those type of things. They also are normally very coordinated. A lot of your kinesthetic learners um, like to do dance or theater or sports. A lot of times they don't wanna sit at a desk all day long. They would rather be up doing something and learning that way than just sitting there reading a book, which is kind of opposite from a read-write learner. Now, read-write lear learners might like to do things as well, but they would rather sit there and read about it. And that is not what a kinesthetic learner likes to do. They also tend to get bored easy because they don't like to just sit still. If that's what they have to do to listen to somebody talk or to hear a lecture or something, they usually get pretty bored. And a lot of times they're labeled as hyperactive because you know, they just want to be on the go because that's their style. They tend to do well in lab with experiments and making models and things because they're doing something. And so they definitely learn by doing rather than by seeing. All right, the first tip that I wanna give you for a kinesthetic learner is to keep them moving. 
that's what they want anyways. They want to be moving around. And so whether it's having them read, um, hold their textbook and walk around the room. And as they're pacing and walking around, read it and speak it out loud. And so not only are you walking and moving, but you're reading and you're using your voice. And so it's a full body experience. And it's a great way to learn for a kinesthetic learner because that's what they want. They want to use the full body to learn. And our kids, when we're learning our books of the Bible, we actually like to use the stairs. And so we did that with repetition for auditory learners, but it also works with kinesthetic learners because as we were learning the New Testament, we have a flight of stairs. And so we would go down the stairs at each stair. We would say, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. And we would say it as we went down and we did it at the same with a timing and a rhythm and something about doing the steps, moving their body and saying with a rhythm really helped it click and help them remember. Or I know um, the curriculum we have, it encourages kids to jump on a trampoline and as they're jumping to quote facts and time with jumping and something about moving and jumping on that trampoline, it's causing their body to move, but it's also causing their mind to work. Another fun way to teach kinesthetic learners is by using learning games. And so especially if it involves other people because interaction is something they thrive on. They enjoy working with other people. And so um, if it's a game maybe that involves multiple people and working together, that's something that's gonna help them learn. Or even if it is just a game with themselves, you know, um, having manipulatives, things that you can learn with and different little games. I know our math that we're using, we're using the good and the beautiful, and it has little manipulatives and games with little cars. And sometimes he'll play it by himself or I'll play it with him. And those little games and math, those are things that he learns from and he enjoys using. So I would try to find learning games where you can actually have objects that you use and you manipulate and people that you interact with. Another fun one, especially since I love theater and acting, is to role play. Because that's a body experience too. I mean, you're using um, your body to act things out. You're having to use your mind and your mouth. And so it is a full total body experience if you're acting or you're role playing a scenario. So it can be if you're studying something that happened in history, like an incident, see if you can act that out. Or maybe you can act out a scenario if you're learning something in health and you need to act out something where someone's heard and first aid. And so those type of things where you act out and you role play, they're gonna thrive on. Another great thing about kinesthetic learners is that they do well if you have them build things or use their hands. Like if you wanna make models, like if you wanna make a model of the solar system or you wanna do science experiments, then actually doing the experiment themselves and not just watching, although they enjoy watching other people do it rather than just reading about it, they would love to be able to do it themselves. So having them help you with science experiments, that gets their mind working. When you're teaching them, kinesthetic learners like to have concrete and real life examples. So if you're learning about area, then have them figure out the area of your living room or the area of their desk and actually have them do something that would make sense to them, not just reading about this little rectangle in a book. And so actually use real life examples, concrete things that they can touch that they can use to learn with. And then you need to keep their feet and their hands busy, just like keeping their body busy, keep their feet and their hands busy. I know there's different things like the fidget spinners or now they have those pop bubbles. They have things like balance boards that you can put under your feet or one of my friends for her children, she has like these elastic type band things around the bottom of her chair that they can just kind of mess with on their feet. Um, while they're sitting there, they can kick these bands and it's not really distracting anybody. It's just keeping them moving so it keeps their mind moving or rolling tennis balls under your feet. Even just chewing gum, as long as it's not distracting to everyone else while they're learning, that might be enough to kind of keep them settled down because they're doing something, but yet they're still getting the information that they're studying as well. So I think that's very helpful. And then using their hands and their feet, things like tracing, um, you know, if they need to, they're studying something in geometry, tracing the shapes actually with their fingers, or especially for my kids who are in the younger years and they're learning to make their letters. We have um, salt and you can do sand, you can do other things as well, but ours is salt just in a clear plastic dollar store container. And we have the letter up there and he'll go through and he'll trace the letter A in the, in the salt and then he'll shake it and he'll do another letter and he'll shake it and something about tracing it and using your finger like that actually helps it stick in their mind. All right, a couple more things. I know I have a lot for this learning style, but like I said, I love 
the teaching part of a kinesthetic learner. And maybe it's because I'm still in the elementary years for my children, but the hands-on I think is so much fun and a great way to learn. They need to take frequent breaks. Now, I'm not saying they have to be long breaks every time. I know there's been studies where I believe it's every for every 20 minutes, they suggest a five minute break. Um, but they, so everybody really needs to take breaks. But kinesthetic learners, they need to take active breaks. So instead of just a break where they just sit there and just kind of rest, normally a kinesthetic learner is one that needs to go run outside for a little bit or go do some jumping jacks or I don't know what you want to have them do, but they need to be active on their break. Again, it doesn't have to be long breaks, but a lot of frequent active breaks is definitely going to help them. And getting them outside. Something about new environments for a kinesthetic learner, that experience of being in new places. So if they can study outside, that will be great for them to be able to have a new environment to learn and just to have to feel the wind in their face and the warmth of the sunshine. They enjoy, again, just feeling those things. And then finally, they definitely are going to be your ones that are going to get a lot from field trips. I did a pros video um, on the pros of homeschooling and one of the main pros is how many field trips we really can take and how we can learn so much from going so many places because we have that freedom and flexibility. And so your kinesthetic learners, all of them are gonna um, definitely benefit from that, but your kinesthetic learners are gonna thrive from those field trips, especially if it's the hands-on. If it's, like I mentioned, my kids went and they learned how to make rope, or they're gonna go to a reenactment and actually get to taste different types of food from that time period. That's That experience for a kinesthetic learner is going to do so much more than setting and reading about history in a book. And so I would encourage you to use field trips to your advantage for all your learners, but especially your kinesthetic learners. So in these last two videos, we've discussed the four VARC learning styles, visual, auditory, read, write, and kinesthetic. And I'm curious, do you have any children that maybe line up with one of these styles as their dominant style of learning? If so, have you found any methods or tools that work best with your child and how they learn and retain information best? Would you put those ideas down in the comments? That way we can get ideas and information off of each other and maybe you can encourage another parent to find ways to help their own child. I hope you've been able to receive some information that's helpful and useful to you in these last videos. I love this stuff. I love learning and diving into how we can help our children learn more and succeed. Would you like this video and subscribe? That would be a great encouragement to me. And I really do hope you'll join us next time. All right, we'll see ya. Bye.